Welcome to Daily Game. Let's start off with Fallout London. According to GOG, Fallout London was redeemed over 500,000 times in 24 hours, making it the fastest redeemed game on GOG ever. Team Folon, the devs behind the popular mod, announced they are planning on using donations to fund an indie game studio. Sunsoft is back. Retro Game Selection was announced and it includes three Japan-only releases in one package. Firework, Thrower, Kantaro's 53 stations of the Tokaido, the Wing of Medulla, and Ripple Island. The pack will be released digitally September 6th for PlayStation Switch and Xbox Series X. Nacon announced a delay for their upcoming open world game Terminator Survivors. It's being moved from October 24th to sometime next year. Two games based off the Halloween film franchise were revealed. Developer Boss Team Games, recently known for Evil Dead the Game, is working on both, but details were only revealed for one of the two. Director John Carpenter will be intimately involved with the game and it will be developed on Unreal Engine 5. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered released in 2017, but just ended entered the Steam bestseller charts for the first time at number two, and it's all because of an upcoming mod that requires it called H2M. The free-to-play mod ports the entirety of Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer platform into Modern Warfare Remastered. Every map, mode, weapon, and even single-player levels that have been converted to custom maps. The mod releases August 16th, and the game is currently 50% off on steam so grab it while it's hot we got our first extended look into valve's upcoming shooter called deadlock this game leaked about a few weeks ago and is currently being beta tested by over 18,000 players now the verges sean hollister was invited to the test and since he did not have to sign any ndas in order to access it he wrote up an article and uploaded a 24 minute clip of the game. He confirms it has 20 heroes and feels like a mix of Overwatch, Team Fortress 2, and Dota. Valve has already banned his account from the test, but I'll leave a link to the article in the notes if you want to check it out. Hopefully you can get to it uh, before Valve asks for it to get taken down. And finally, a plot twist to end all plot twists as developer Tango Gameworks has been saved from an early grave. South Korean publisher Krafton, best known for being the parent company for PUBG Studios and Callisto Protocol's Striking Distance, has struck a deal with Microsoft to acquire the company to save them from being shut down. As part of the deal, they will obtain the rights to Hi-Fi Rush and Microsoft will retain the rights to The Evil Within and Ghostwire. Tokyo. Now, this is interesting for a few reasons. I'm definitely going to go more in depth on Monday's episode, so I'm not going to go too crazy talking about it right now. But uh, the interesting part about this is that it shows that there was value in the company. I think a lot of us, when we thought Microsoft shut it down, had to be for some sort of fiscal or financial reason that we obviously, A, couldn't see, and B, they would never tell us about. But when another company comes in and they say, hey, you know, we would actually like to buy this company instead of you guys shutting it down, that means like another company um you know initially thought there was value then once they were revealed financials they said yeah you know what there actually is value here i don't think that evil within and ghostwire tokyo those ip were held by microsoft i personally would guess that Krafton said you know what you guys can can you guys keep those and give us a discount let us just have hi-fi rush uh that means that Krafton stepped in they saw the value of the team the value of what they're doing they saw financially and said to themselves yeah i think we can make this work they also saw what hi-fi rush was able to do and said to themselves yeah i think if a sequel would actually do really well and i think they were right by all accounts i do think that microsoft is going to look back and regret this decision that they made i don't think it was ever a good decision a lot of fans never agreed it was a good decision and uh you know it's great news because now tango gameworks is able to continue but on the other spectrum it also once again to me shows a failure at microsoft because their biggest issue is games and they finally had you know one of the more interesting games that they've released in the last decade and they immediately decided to let the team go it's, it's just all around very weird i'll talk about it more on monday's podcast if you want to tune in and before we go gfc game world released a 35 minute deep dive into the upcoming stalker 2 i'll leave a link in the show notes if you want to check it out that's it for today like it if you like this subscribe if you loved it and check out the camp koji podcast every monday peace